Hello, I'm Lauren, and I have a story to share. I'm 35, and until recently, I worked as a cosmetologist at an upscale clinic downtown. It wasn't a bad job, decent pay, nice clients, and I got to help people feel good about themselves. But I always had a bigger dream, running my own business. Let me introduce you to another key figure in this story, my husband, or rather, my ex-husband now. Let's call him Adam. Adam is four years older than me and used to work as a manager at a large construction company. We'd been married for five years and lived in my apartment. Babe, opening your own place is the way to go, Adam would say, relaxing on the couch with a beer. You'd be the boss, set your own hours. It's the dream, right? I'd nod, feeling excited inside. Yeah, you're right. But it's going to take a lot of work and money to get there. Adam would just wave it off. Don't worry about that. We'll figure it out. I'll support us while you get it started. You just focus on being a great business owner. So, I started saving every extra penny. No more fancy dinners, no new clothes, nothing. I was on a mission. Geez, Lauren, you don't have to be so strict, Adam would say when I refused to order takeout for the fourth time in a week. Every dollar counts, Adam, I'd tell him, heating up leftovers. We agreed on this, remember? He'd grumble but eventually nod. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It'll be worth it in the end. I should probably mention that Adam had been married before. He told me he left his apartment to his ex-wife after their divorce. They had been together for six years, and that's about all I knew. Anytime I tried to ask more, he'd get quiet. Months went by, and I finally felt ready to go for it. I quit my job at the clinic, got my license, found the perfect little space, and started renovating. Every day was filled with decisions, what equipment to buy, how to decorate. Finally, after what seemed like forever, I was ready to open. I worked non-stop, 14 days, 2 weeks, from early morning until late at night. I barely saw Adam during those first few weeks. When I got home, he was already asleep, when I left in the morning, he was still snoring. Then one day, while I was in the middle of giving a facial, my phone started buzzing like crazy. At first, I ignored it, I'm a professional, after all. But the phone wouldn't stop buzzing, and I started to worry. What if something had happened to Adam? As soon as my client left, I checked my phone. There were 10 missed calls from my mother-in-law, Amy. My stomach dropped. Amy never called unless it was something serious. I called her back, my heart racing. Amy, is everything okay? Lauren, thank goodness, she said, her voice shaky. I've been trying to reach Adam all day. There's some kind of scandal at his work, and I can't get through to him. I'm really worried. It felt like a bucket of cold water had been thrown over me. Scandal? What scandal? I don't know anything about it. Adam hadn't said a word. There was a long pause on the other end of the line. Oh, she finally replied. I see. Well, if you hear from him, please ask him to call me. That night, I stayed up waiting for Adam. He finally came home around midnight, smelling like beer. Where have you been? I asked, trying to stay calm. Your mom's been trying to reach you all day. She said something about a scandal at work. Adam froze for a moment, then sighed heavily. He sank onto the couch without looking at me. I guess I should have told you sooner. I quit my job about a month ago. It felt like I'd been punched in the gut. A month? You've been unemployed for a month and you didn't tell me? What happened? I got into a fight with my boss, Adam said, bitterness in his voice. He was being a jerk, and I just couldn't take it anymore. My pride wouldn't let me stay. I took a deep breath, trying to make sense of what he was saying. Here I was, working myself to the bone, and Adam had been at home all this time. Why didn't you look for another job? Adam looked at me, his eyes filled with guilt. I think I'm burned out, Lauren. I need a break. Maybe I should see a psychologist or something. I just can't jump into another job right now. 
part of me wanted to scream at him. We had a plan. He was supposed to support us while I got my business off the ground. But seeing him sitting there, looking so defeated, I couldn't bring myself to yell. Okay, I said after a long pause. We'll figure this out. But no more secrets, Adam. We're a team, remember? He nodded, relief washing over his face. I'm sorry, Lauren. I promise, no more secrets. Little did I know, that was just the first of many promises he'd break. The next few weeks were tough. I started picking up extra shifts at my old clinic, working mornings at my own office and afternoons at the clinic. It was exhausting, but I didn't have a choice. We had bills to pay, and I still had a loan to repay for the office. Adam spent most of his time at home, supposedly looking for jobs online, but mostly playing video games. I tried to be supportive, reminding myself that mental health is important. But as the weeks turned into months, I started to wonder if he was even trying at all. Then finally, a glimmer of hope. One day, Adam came home grinning from ear to ear. I got a job, he announced. I was so relieved I could have cried. That night, we celebrated with a bottle of wine, toasting to new beginnings. For a moment, it felt like everything was going to be okay. But Adam's new job only lasted a month. One day, I came home from a long shift to find him sprawled on the couch, beer in hand, staring blankly at the TV. You're home early, I said, feeling a sinking sensation in my stomach. He shrugged, still watching the screen. I quit. It felt like a punch to the gut. What? Why? The boss was a jerk. Wanted me to be a robot. All about discipline and following orders. Screw that. I took a deep breath, trying to stay calm. Adam, we talked about this. We can't afford for you to keep quitting jobs. He finally looked at me, his eyes cold. So, I'm supposed to be miserable? I thought you'd be more understanding, Lauren. I bit my tongue, not wanting to start a fight. But inside, I was boiling. Understanding? I was working myself to the bone while he sat around drinking beer and playing video games. The next eight months were a blur of work, stress, and mounting frustration. I'd come home to find Adam exactly where I'd left him, surrounded by empty beer cans and takeout containers. Any luck with the job search, I'd ask, trying to keep the desperation out of my voice. Nothing good out there, he'd reply, waving his hand like it didn't matter. I'm looking for something interesting, you know? With good pay but not too demanding. I wanted to scream. Who didn't want a job like that? But those jobs don't just fall into your lap. You have to work for them. Then one night, after a long day, I came home to find Adam actually up and about. He had this strange, excited look in his eyes. Lauren, I've been thinking, he said, pulling me down onto the couch. We should have a baby. I stared at him, sure I'd misheard. What? Yeah, think about it, he said, grinning. I could be a stay-at-home dad. You go to work, and I take care of the baby. It's perfect. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Adam, you've never even washed a dish in this apartment. How are you going to take care of a baby? His face fell. What? You don't think I could do it? It's not that. It's just that taking care of a baby is a lot of work, and we're not exactly in a good financial spot right now. You're being cruel, he said in a low voice. You don't understand my problems. I let out a bitter laugh. Your problems, Adam? I'm working 14 days, 2 weeks. I'm exhausted, and you want to add a baby to all this? He stormed off, slamming the bedroom door behind him. I sat on the couch with my head in my hands, wondering how we had gotten to this point. It all started with the video games. At first, I didn't think much of it, everyone needs a hobby, right? But then I noticed our joint bank account was losing money fast. Adam, I said one evening, trying to stay calm. Did you buy another game? And did you upgrade your computer? He didn't even look away from the screen. Yeah, so what? 
It's our money, isn't it? I took a deep breath. We're supposed to be saving, remember? For our future. He paused the game and turned to me, acting all innocent. Babe, it's an investment in my leisure time. You know, don't worry. I'll pay it all back when I get a job. That was the last straw. The next day, I closed our joint account and stopped giving Adam any more money. If he wanted to act like a child, fine. But I wasn't going to be his personal ATM anymore. I thought that would solve things. Boy, was I wrong. The fight started almost right away. Adam would stomp around the apartment, slamming doors and muttering under his breath. You don't respect me, he'd yell. You're trying to control me. I tried to stay calm. Adam, I'm just trying to keep us afloat. We can't keep spending money we don't have. He stormed off again, leaving me standing in the kitchen, wondering how we ended up like this. Days went by, and Adam didn't lift a finger around the apartment. Dishes piled up in the sink, laundry overflowed from the hamper, and takeout containers were scattered everywhere. I was working myself to the bone, and he couldn't even be bothered to vacuum. Then came the day that changed everything. I got home early from work, my head pounding with a migraine. As I approached our apartment door, I heard Adam's voice coming through the open window. Yeah, Mom. I need a new suit for this great new job. Could you lend me some money? I'll pay you back as soon as I get my first paycheck. I froze, my hand on the doorknob. New job? What new job? I burst into the apartment, startling Adam so much he dropped his phone. What new job, Adam? I demanded. He stammered, trying to come up with a lie, but I had caught him red-handed. You were going to take money from your parents for a job that doesn't even exist. I was shaking with anger. I was going to tell you, he mumbled. Tell me what? That you're a liar? That you'd rather take money from your parents than get up and find a real job? What followed was a huge fight. We yelled, we cried, and said things we couldn't take back. In the end, Adam grabbed a bag and stormed out, saying he was going to stay with his parents for a while. As the door slammed behind him, I sank to the floor, my head in my hands. I had my own business. I was driven. I was successful. Yet here I was, married to a man who seemed determined to drag us both down. The days after Adam left were strange. I kept expecting him to come back, full of apologies and promises to do better. But as one day turned into one, then two, and then a week, there was nothing. No calls, no texts, not even a lousy email. Part of me was relieved. The apartment was peaceful, no more walking on eggshells, no more cleaning up after a grown man who acted like a teenager. But another part of me was worried. What if something had happened to him? Just when I was thinking about calling his parents, my phone rang. Adam's name flashed on the screen. I answered, my heart pounding. Adam, where are you? Are you okay? His voice was cheerful. Hey, babe. Guess where I am? Miami. Can you believe it? Mom always wanted to come here, so we decided to make it a family trip. It's amazing. It felt like a punch to the gut. While I had been here worrying about him, he was on vacation. What do you mean, we decided? When did you decide this? Oh, you know, it was kind of a last-minute thing, he said, sounding casual. I told mom and dad about my great new job offer, and we thought, why not celebrate? There was a pause, then Adam's voice came back, quieter this time. Look, what they don't know won't hurt them, right? We're having a great time. I'll find a job when we get back. I promise. And how exactly are you paying for all this? I asked, fearing the answer. Oh, don't worry about that, he said, his voice brightening again. I, uh, borrowed a couple of your credit cards. But don't freak out. I'll bring you back a magnet or something, okay? Have a too great weekend. And then he hung up. Just like that. 
I stood there, staring at my phone, feeling like my entire world was falling apart. The man I had married had stolen my credit cards to fund a vacation based on a lie. Something inside me snapped. I was done. No more second chances. No more excuses. With shaking hands, I opened my banking app and blocked every one of my cards. Then I called a locksmith. I need my locks changed, I said, my voice steady. Today. As soon as possible. The locksmith came and went, and I was left alone in an apartment that suddenly felt too big, too empty. But I wasn't finished yet. I grabbed my phone and made one more call, to a divorce lawyer. Later that day, as I sat in the lawyer's office, I felt a strange mix of emotions, sadness, anger, fear, but also relief. Signing those divorce papers was the first step in taking back control of my life. That evening, I was settling in for a quiet night at home, the first in what felt like forever, when my phone started buzzing. Adam's name flashed on the screen. I took a deep breath and answered. Lauren, thank God you picked up, Adam's voice was frantic. Something's wrong with the cards. They're not working. We can't pay for anything. I could hear the panic in his voice, but I felt surprisingly calm. That's because I blocked them, Adam. There was stunned silence on the other end, then, you what? Why would you do that? Because they're my cards, Adam. I didn't give you permission to use them. But, but we're stranded here. Mom and Dad are freaking out. You have to unblock them. I could hear the desperation, but I stayed firm. No, I don't have to do anything. You got yourself into this mess. You can get yourself out. That's when he lost it. Are you kidding me? You're putting me in an impossible situation here. You're my wife. You're supposed to help me. Unblock the cards right now, or I swear to God, I'll divorce you. I burst out laughing, a deep, uncontrollable laugh that seemed to come from a part of me that had been locked away for too long. Oh, Adam, I said once I could speak again. You're a little late with that threat. Then I hung up. The next day, I rented a storage unit and packed up all of Adam's things. Every shirt, every game console, every little thing that reminded me of him, it all went into boxes and then into storage. I knew he would come home soon probably expecting to walk right back into our apartment like nothing had happened. Well, he was in for a surprise. Sure enough, a few days later, my phone rang. Adam's voice was a mix of confusion and anger. Lauren, what the hell? I can't get into the apartment. Yes, I did, I said calmly. Your things are in a storage unit. I'll text you the address and unit number. My things? What are you talking about? Let me in, Lauren. This isn't funny. I took a deep breath. This was it. I'm not joking, Adam. I filed for divorce. The papers should arrive at your parents' house any day now. There was a long silence, then, divorce, Lauren? Come on, you can't be serious. We can work this out. Let's start over. Okay, I'll do better. I promise. It's over, Adam, I said firmly. I've made my decision. Please don't contact me again except through my lawyer. I hung up and blocked his number. As I sat there in my quiet apartment, I felt a mix of emotions, sadness for what could have been, anger at all the lies and betrayal, but mostly, I felt relief. For the first time in a long time, I felt like I could breathe. A few days after blocking Adam's number, my phone rang with an unfamiliar number. I almost didn't answer, thinking it might be Adam trying to reach me from a different phone. But something made me pick up. Hello, I said cautiously. Lauren, it's Amy. Adam's mother. My stomach tightened. Here it comes, I thought. The lecture about ruining their family vacation, about being a terrible wife, about not standing by Adam. Amy, I said, trying to keep my voice calm. I'm sorry about what happened in Miami. I. She cut me off. No, Lauren. I'm the one who should apologize. I'm so disappointed in Adam. 
I thought he had changed. What do you mean? I asked, curious. There was a long sigh on the other end of the line. Lauren, there's something you should know. Adam's first marriage, it didn't end because they grew apart like he told you. His ex-wife left him because of his irresponsibility, his lying, his inability to keep a job, and his stealing. It felt like I had been hit with a wave of cold water. It felt like I'd been punched in the gut. He never told me. I know, Amy, she said softly. We thought, hoped, that living with you, seeing how hardworking and responsible you are, would inspire him to change, to grow up. Her voice trailed off, and I could hear the pain in it. I felt a wave of sympathy for her. She had been fooled just like I had. Amy, I'm so sorry, I said. I had no idea. No, Lauren. I'm sorry, she said, her voice firm. I'm sorry we didn't tell you the full truth from the start. I'm sorry we let you go through this, and I'm more sorry than I can express for what Adam has put you through. Tears welled up in my eyes. Thank you, I whispered. I want you to know, Amy continued, that when we found out the truth, how he had been lying to you for months, how he stole your credit cards, and how he deceived us about having a job, we kicked him out. He's not welcome in our home right now. I was speechless. I had been so worried about being judged by Adam's family, and here they were, standing by me instead. I don't blame you for divorcing him, Lauren, Amy said. You deserve so much better. I just hope you don't think badly of all of us because of Adam's actions. No, of course not, I said quickly. Amy, I never blamed you or your husband. You've both always been kind to me. We talked for a while longer, with Amy filling me in on some of the details I had missed. By the time we hung up, I felt like a weight had been lifted off my shoulders. I wasn't alone in this. I wasn't wrong for feeling betrayed and angry. In the weeks that followed my conversation with Amy, life started to settle into a new rhythm. I threw myself into my work, finding comfort in the familiar routines of my cosmetology office. Without Adam's constant drama and financial strain, I had more energy, more focus, and surprisingly, more money. But Adam wasn't going to let go easily. One evening, as I was locking up the office, I saw a familiar figure leaning against my car. My heart sank. Lauren, Adam called out as I approached. Can we talk, please? I've changed. I swear. I'm looking for a job, a real one this time. I'll pay you back every cent. Just give me another chance. For a split second, I felt a twinge of something, nostalgia, maybe pity. But then I remembered all the lies, all the broken promises, and all the stress and pain he had put me through. No, I said firmly. I'm done giving you chances, Adam. Please leave. I walked past him and got into my car, my hands shaking as I started the engine. As I drove away, I saw him in my rearview mirror, standing there looking lost. But I didn't turn back. That was the last time I saw Adam in person. He tried calling a few more times from different numbers, but I blocked them all. Eventually, the divorce was finalized without any more drama. And you know what? Life got a lot better without the constant stress of Adam being unemployed and spending money. My finances improved a lot. I was able to put all my energy into my cosmetology office, and it paid off. My client list grew, word spread, and soon I was busier than ever. I decided to quit my part-time job at the clinic and focus completely on my own business. It was scary at first, but it turned out to be the best decision I could have made. With the extra time and energy, I focused on marketing and expanding my services. I even hired two more cosmetologists to help with the workload. Suddenly, I wasn't just a cosmetologist anymore. I was a boss. The loan I had taken out to start the business was paid off ahead of schedule. The constant worry about money was gone, and for the first time in years, I felt financially secure. But it wasn't just about the money. I started treating myself to little things, weekend trips, nice dinners, those shoes I'd wanted for months. These were things I had always denied myself before thinking we needed to save every penny for some future that never came. 
Now, as I sit in my expanded office, looking at plans for a new treatment room, I can't help but be amazed at how much has changed. I'm not just surviving anymore. I'm thriving. And I did it all on my own. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't always easy. There were nights when I missed having someone to come home to, someone to share my successes with. But those moments became fewer as I built a life I truly loved. Looking back, I realized that ending my marriage to Adam wasn't the end of my story. It was the beginning. It was the moment I chose myself, my dreams, and my future. And you know what? I'd make that choice again in a heartbeat.